This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And as you may have heard, unless you were hiding under a rock somewhere, COBOL is destroying the world. COBOL is the number one cause for coronavirus, at least if you start to read some of the stuff that's printed in uh, even respectable publications such as Bloomberg here. An ancient computer language is slowing America's giant stimulus. So apparently COBOL <laughs> is what's, uh, as you can see here, um, it's a 60 year old programming language and, uh, and, that's, and that's the problem we have in America. So uh, I, I don't know where people get this, you know, what, what kind of journalists write stuff like this. COBOL, yes, is a 60 year old programming language, but uh, it's as modern as C++ and IBM is still releasing new versions of COBOL all the time. COBOL is in six, it runs in 64 bit. Um, and there is amazing compilers for it, which are sometimes COBOL code compiles into more uh, efficient code than even when if you were to write it in assembly. And so um, just saying things like our mainframe is literally over 30 years old, that's possible, uh, but that's, that's not COBOL's fault if they don't update their mainframes. Uh, but um, but COBOL is not an old, it's not an ancient language, and COBOL is not the problem. Let's set a little bit more what they write here. Uh, New Jersey Governor COBOL, and so needs volunteers who know COBOL, a 60-year-old programming language. They make it look. I mean, it's not really the journalist's fault. They don't know anything, but. In a way, it's it's a shame they make they make it look like it, the problem that we have with Corona and the problem that New Jersey has is that they use a language that's 60 years old. That's just not true. COBOL was invented um, and uh, and first uh, developed in the uh, let's see here in 1959. Right, so that does make it 61 years old, but um, but in the meantime, many many new versions of COBOL have come out. Um, IBM's last or latest release of COBOL must be like I want to say maybe a year old. Um, COBOL, there's several COBOL standards. Uh, COBOL has kept up with the time. You even have object-oriented COBOL, for goodness sake, and. Um, and it's, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's for full 64-bit mode. It can address any modern database. And, um, and there's nothing that you can do with a C++ that you wouldn't be able to do also with, with COBOL. It's just, it's just another programming language. And on the mainframe, COBOL does make a lot of sense because, because COBOL kind of uh, fits uh, the environment of, of, the, of the mainframe the best. And also because the mainframe to this day is the only uh, computer system that is able to, number one, keep up with the very high transaction rates that you see in government, such as New Jersey. Number two, has the reliability and, uh, and the security that you need for something like the health department of New Jersey. And in fact, the reason why they still have the mainframe in the New Jersey Health Department is because it's reliable and it works and it's also cost effective. Governments are the first ones to switch away from a technology or not even enter it if it's not cost effective because they have tight budgets. So let's not uh, blame COBOL here for the problems of New Jersey um, because that's just not, uh, that's just not true. Um, and... Um, and let's see what COBOL really is like. So I thought in this video here for all the people who are dropping by just because of the, of the, of the wave of news around COBOL, we'll show them what COBOL really is like. So uh, first few things, you, if you came here to this, to, this, um, to this channel, it's probably because you're somehow related to IT or because you program yourself. So first a few things to know about COBOL is that COBOL has its own uh, structure you have first line numbers on the left okay they're now nowadays you don't really have to put the line numbers anymore with modern version of compilers but that's kind of where COBOL came from you would have line numbers and then if on this column here on column 8 you would have an asterisk if it was 
um, if it was a comment line like this line here uh, that's a comment line let's make it a little bigger for you to read okay and so if you'd have an asterisk if it's a comment or you would have a minus or a hyphen if it was a continuation from the previous line um, and um, and then on uh, starting sorry on, on column seven you would have this and then on column eight you would then start the the code and all the code uh, in COBOL has is is it's meant as you know it's meant to be like english like so uh, the way that this uh, is structured every COBOL code program starts with a program that you need this kind of directive at the very beginning and then you have several divisions um, one would be, for instance, as you saw here, the identification division. And the second one, which you must have, is a procedure division. So in the identification division, you, you say something about the program, where who wrote it, and where it's supposed to run, and where it's supposed to be compiled. And in the second part, you have the procedural division, procedure division here, where you do things. And so you have these divisions, and every division contains a section, and every section contains a paragraph, every paragraph contains at least a statement, a sentence, and then a statement, and then just characters. So what this reminds us of, if you look at this, it's almost like a book, right? And so and that's because COBOL is meant to be English-like. And um, as you can see here, we have here the division, procedural division, then we have the section, first paragraph section, and then the statement, display, full name, that's a statement. Um, so that's how uh, COBOL is structured. It has, um, it has a very rich set of variables and, and that actually match business data. So you can say, for instance, how a variable supposed to contain numbers. Is it um, how many numbers? Is there a comma? Is there a dot to, um, to signify the decimals? Is there a sign? So you have all this very rich description of data because that's what COBOL is meant to do, work with business data and numbers and, and, uh, and uh, amounts of money. And that's why um, COBOL is such a perfect uh, language to write business applications and government applications, such as you would find in the New Jersey Health Department. So I thought we would take um, a very common program um, from a fun website called uh, 99beerbottles.net. They have a program that counts down 99 beer bottles down to zero in almost every program you can imagine. So they have it, uh, I'm sure you can find it in C. If we click here, mm, okay, here's one. Okay, so now you look at this and then I'll show you the program in COBOL and you will have, to, I think you'll have to agree with me, COBOL is kind of elegant and beautiful to look at. I mean, I can make it bigger for you, but um, so you can see here, this is the same program in C. And while I do a lot of programming in C, I think it's just very ugly. It reminds me kind of of the, of the 70s. And uh, it's, just, it's just not beautiful. And if you compare it with this, what we add in here, now look at this. This is the same program now, but in COBOL. It's very simple to understand and it's elegant perform varying i from 91 by minus one until i. So everybody can understand. So this is a for loop. Um, we count down from 99 by minus one until i equals one. So it's English from count down from 99 by minus one until i equals one. So it means from 99 down to one. Move spaces into buffer B1. So we can just put in spaces in this buffer here very simple to understand. Move one to J, where is J here? It's just a placeholder. Um, it can hold three numbers. It's an integer with three digits. Divide I by 10, giving K reminder one. So it's very simple to understand. If you read this through, like you would read a, a, a magazine article or a book, you will understand what the um, COBOL program does. So. I have here a connection to a very modern mainframe. In fact, this is running uh, you know, a very, very uh, recent version of the mainframe operating system. And I have syntax highlighting here for COBOL. And I just copied this program from this 
uh, website I just showed you, 99beerbottles.net, and put it in here exactly as it was. You, you remember the sentence, perform varying i from 99 by minus 1 until i equals 1. And what I'm going to do is we're going to run this, I called it COBE fun for COBOL fun. So I just copied and pasted it. The thing to remember is that um, we want to keep some spaces here. We don't need line numbers anymore, but I still uh, leave the uh, that space out. And then here, as you can, for instance, see the hyphen here means we're continuing the previous line. And here again. Um, otherwise, this will leave this this whole uh, column alone, and we write all the code here. So let's see what happens. Um, Um, this is just a normal mainframe uh, terminal session. You may have seen this if you're, if you're interested in COBOL, maybe it's because either you want to know what this is, you've never seen it, or because maybe you worked with it you know, a few years ago and uh, long to see it again. So we have a, a mainframe session here on my terminal and uh, let's COBOL and uh, I call this uh, job Cobalt fun, fun. And if you understand this, you'll, you'll know why. And um, here I just give a few parameters to the Cobalt compiler, one I want to see in my Cobalt listing. Here's the Cobalt library that I need to compile. And I'll tell it, um, take the, the source to compile from this library, moshix.work.prog and then cop fun. If you look at this, that's exactly what the program is called. Okay, so that's why I put in here. And uh, and then I tell it, put the output um, with this kind of formatting, uh, line length of 161 bytes, just to make it look good. And we could also just uh, do away with this. Uh, okay, so that's all we need to run this. There's a small error here. I need to put in an X. Okay. Let's save this and we run it. I type submit and I submit this job to be processed. And remember the job means compile link and go. That's why we have CLG. Compile it and then if the compilation succeeds, link the program as in as in any other you would have on any other platform really. And then go means execute the program. We give the region size of 250 megabytes and these are the parameters of the COBOL compiler. So let's run this. And you can see here job Moshix Co with uh, job number 1448 has been submitted. And if I press enter again, I'm sure it's already finished. Yes. So uh, here I'm being informed that the job has executed with maximum condition code of zero. That's amazing. So let's start a new session. We go here to more additional IBM products. Then we go to five for a spool search. So we want to see in the spool Oh, that's where all the output lands and here's my job uh, job 1448 Moshix COBOL so I picked this up and you don't have to really understand any of what's going on here you would have the same kind of confusing um, and unknown compiler messages and with any compiler C or or C++ you don't have to know all that but let's get to our COBOL source um, as you can see here, we're, we're on the 13th of April, and here's my program. Now, for instance, the COBOL compiler is able to, uh, sorry, the COBOL compiler is able to see that, um, let's make this maximum size. You can see that this is one level nested deep, so this is one loop. Right? And here it goes actually one less level deeper because we have an if statement. So the COBOL compiler is very, very modern. 
we can recognize all these things. And then uh, here are all the variables. And now, for instance, you know, it tells me every variable in which line we use it and for what purpose, and if it's being modified in that line or not. I mean, which, co which compiler do you know on Linux or Windows which tells you variable for variable in which line it's being used and if it's being modified in that line? And many other things it can tell you. So it's just a, it's just a very modern environment. Uh, you can see here um, what the what the letters mean. Here, this is the legend for um, for what's printed in here. I find this very useful because when I use a variable, I can go check later on where I'm working with the variable. Um, it also has a very extensive debugger. And, and so, as you can see here, um, just very useful information for, 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 uh, for the programmer. And finally, we have the linkage editor that linked it. And in this case, it was linked in 30, well, 31 bit mode, comparable to 32 bit, but I could also do it in 64 bit. And here I have the output from the program. 99 beer bottles, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around, 98 beer, bottles of beer on the wall. 98 bottles of beer on the wall, 98 beers, bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around, 98, seven bottles of beer on the wall. So this is well known programming exercise because you have to count down. And uh, it's a fun exercise. And no bottles of beer on the wall, no more bottles of beer. Go to the store and buy some more 99 bottles of beer on the wall. So uh, that's it. I mean, this is what this program will generate. Uh, swap one, swap two. Oops, here it is. Oops. Swap list. Uh, here it is. So here's our program, very simple to understand. Here's the text that goes into the sentences printed, right? If we compare this, it always starts bottles of beer on the wall, take one down, pass it around. So swap list three. As you can see here from the structure, bottles of beer on the wall. Right, and then take one down, pass down, then the, the 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 value. So it's very simple to understand, and um, and then it counts down until we go down to one. As you can see here, and then when we finished, no more bottles of beer on the wall. And so that's simple because that's always the same. Um, and that's the end of the program, bot beer. Let's see, bot beer, right? So this has to match. See here, program ID, bot beer. There's a lot more information you can put in the ID division on what computer you, you're compiling it, on what computer is sup sup supposed to run, who the author is. There's, we're, this is just the bare minimum. You can put a lot more information. Now, COBOL, of course, can call Java. Java can call a COBOL program. Uh, C can call, or C++ can call the COBOL com pro uh, program, and vice versa. So all these combinations work just fine on the mainframe and anywhere else. And as you know, there's also Unix on the mainframe itself, and COBOL will also run on Unix itself on the mainframe. So there's nothing of the kind that suggests, um, so you see here, that um, the COBOL is the problem is the problem of the health department because if you think about it i mean we've had many other diseases before in the us and nobody ever said that COBOL was the problem of the health departments yeah they probably will have to update the um, the their their software now and then and it is true that fewer and fewer COBOL programmers exist um, but that doesn't mean that the problem is the COBOL language itself Let's separate between the problem of people who know the language and, and there's still many, many dozens or hundreds of thousands of people worldwide who know COBOL because 
there's still many, many millions of lines of COBOL being written every single year around the world and many billions of lines of COBOL still run in production. And let's just say this once again, you cannot open a bank account, you cannot take a flight, you cannot go through a toll road without incurring a COBOL core program somewhere in the system. COBOL is, is indispensable. It's part of the economy we live in, it's part of the government we live in. You cannot do away with COBOL, you cannot do away with mainframes. It's just the reliability and the security of the mainframes is just unparalleled. And if you want to be able to always depend on the fact that when you book a flight that, uh, you know, that, that the website is answering, or that when you uh, go through a toll road that everything is processed uh, always reliably, when you make a phone call that you, know, you get billed correctly, that kind of reliability, um, that kind of demands the mainframe because you can't do it without the mainframe. Uh, mainframes have uptimes that are just uh, unbelievably high and also the ma massive scalability of the mainframes, you can't really do it without. Uh, just out of curiosity, I want to find out how long this mainframe here has been running. Uh, let's see if we can find out. Uh, uh, there should be a way to find out. Uh, let's just go here. And let's say the IPL info. Okay, so this mainframe was IPL'd, or IPL means initial program loading, which is the same as booting. This mainframe was booted on the 10th of July, 2008. <laughs> so I rest my case here. This machine has been up for almost three years now. It's just doing its job. It's just always there. It never goes down. And um, this is just to show you, uh, if you go up all the way, how reliable these machines are. And all this to say that um, it doesn't help to blame COBOL. We should blame the health department and the government of New Jersey. Why have they not done more of the years to bring in more COBOL programmers and more people who understand the mainframe? Um, it, is, it, is, it is just not true that they can, um, that, they, that COBOL is the problem. I also don't believe that the health department of New Jersey is running a mainframe that is literally 30 years old. I just struggle to understand how that is possible. I mean, there's no maintenance anymore for 30 year old mainframes. IBM doesn't maintain those machines anymore. I, I just, I don't believe it. Uh, you know, they may have a, an environment that looks to the governor like it's 30 years old, but I bet you it's just not true. Uh, and I don't believe it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not implying that the governor of New Jersey is a bad person. It's just not very well informed. But it did create a lot of waves, and I think it was important to uh, explain to people that COBOL is still a modern language, that mainframes are indispensable because they're so reliable and secure, and that the problem of the health department of New Jersey is they don't have enough developers. So they just need to go out there and find them. And the, and the, and the news outlets, they, they, I think, the governor correctly explained that his problem was finding more COBOL programmers, and instead the news outlets are now blaming COBOL. But COBOL is a lot of fun, as you can see here, works fine uh, every single time. And, uh, and, oops. and there's really not much to it. It's a, it's as modern a language as any one you find out there. If you have any questions about COBOL, please um, post comments below this video. I will also post a link to a Discord channel where you find many other mainframers and you can ask your questions there. It's a fun community. And um, if you have any other comments, please post them below this video. I would like to hear from you. Thank you for watching and goodbye.